Hi there, Doug Stewin with IT Creations with a 1U Gigabyte networking rack server, the Gigabyte R182-NAO. Since there's a Rev100 on this system, I think we can be pretty sure that there will be an update to the processor at some point, but let's not dwell on that. This server in its current configuration supports dual third generation Intel Xeon scalable processors for improved memory capacity, improved throughput, and a hybrid backplane for support of SAS, SATA, and NVMe drive formats. Let's take a look. Intel's third generation Intel Xeon scalable processors deliver significantly more performance than the first and second generation CPUs. For starters, Platinum processors will deliver up to 40 physical cores and 80 virtual threads, although that's only at the Platinum level. Gold tops out at up to 32 cores and silver at up to 20 cores. They also deliver PCI 4.0 for that improved throughput I mentioned, and more PCI lanes too, with 64 PCI 4.0 lanes instead of 48 PCI 3.0 lanes on the previous generations. This particular platform is targeted at network applications like file storage, hosting an internet, file access via VPN for use as a shared internet connection and or a virtual server. There are eight other R182 chassis configurations in this family, all 1U, with half offering 7003 series AMD EPIC processors and the other half with third generation Intel Xeon scalable processors and supporting different storage options and IO connection speeds, among other things. I'm not going to mention the differences because it does get a little confusing. As a 1U server, the Gigabyte R182NAO does have a low profile with 10 2.5 inch drive bays on the front of the chassis. Those bays can support either SAS, SATA, or NVMe U.2 4.0 drives, either hard disk or solid state. A small control panel on the left hand side features a few telltale lights, plus a reset button. There's also a non-maskable interrupt button, on-off button, and an ID button. The LEDs just below the buttons indicate HDD status, system status, plus LAN 1 and LAN 2 status. The LEDs change color or blink to indicate the health status of specific components. Are you interested in the Gigabyte G182 NAO rack server? Because if you are, then for a limited time, you can save up to $500 off a system you can configure on our online configurator. <laughs> That's right, just click that link to configure your system. And when you're ready to make a purchase, just mention this video to save big. The savings could pay your power bill to run this system for an entire year, and then some. On the back of the system, starting on the left hand, there are two 1 plus 1 redundant 1300 watt, 240 volt, 80 plus platinum PSUs. The PSUs are more power efficient too, thanks to Gigabyte's cold redundancy power management. On servers with 1 plus 1 redundant PSUs, cold redundancy will automatically place one of the PSUs in standby mode if the system load falls below 40%. Beyond the PSUs, are two PCI slots on top, a VGA port, a mezzanine card slot, two USB 3.0, two one gigabit LAN ports, a dedicated management port, ID button with LED, and another OCP card slot. The covers on the OCP mezzanine card slots look different because one is for an OCP 2.0 card with a PCI Gen 3 by 8 bandwidth supported by the CPU 1. This card is not as easily removed as an OCP 3.0 mezzanine card, which occupies the other slot. The OCP 3.0 mezzanine slot features a PCI Gen 4 by 16 connection and is supported by CPU 0. The new OCP 3.0 card is the next generation of add-on cards and can be removed without opening the server or using any tools. Just a few thumb screws and then just a slot in. Whereas that OCP 2.0 card, you will need to open the case. That dedicated MLAN port on the back of the system provides access to the ASPEED AST 2500 baseboard management controller module located on the system board. It utilizes the AMI Megarack SPX controller. The Gigabyte management console comes pre-installed for managing single server or small clusters of servers and uses an HTML5 graphical user interface. Gigabyte server management or GSM is another animal entirely and enables management of large clusters of servers in real time simultaneously. It enables remote monitoring and management. You'll need to install the GSM agent on each server to retrieve information. GSM complies with Integrated Platform Management Interface 2.0, or IPMI 2.0, and Redfish standards, so you can interact with other third-party applications. There's even a mobile app. Both applications are free of charge with no licensing fees. Now that's something you won't find with other manufacturers. Inside the case, it looks very dense. Starting at the front of the chassis, there's the hard drive cage connecting to the hybrid backplane and then a row of eight fans. The fans feature automatic fan speed controls to reduce individual fan speeds based on the temperature readings of sensors placed at key locations around the system board. 
You can even create custom fan profiles using the Gigabyte Management Console. Beyond that, there are the CPUs and memory modules. Fan ducts right on top of the CPUs with heat sinks, ensuring they benefit from the constant stream of cooler air. The processors in this case are where the magic happens, as we have dual Intel Xeon scalable processors from the third generation, codenamed Ice Lake. I hate saying new, because that never ages well in these videos, so let's just move on. As I said, these third generation Intel Xeon scalable processors offer up to 40 cores at the platinum level, 32 cores at the gold, and up to 20 cores using silver. Double those values for the number of virtual cores produced using Intel's hyper-threading technology. In a nutshell, you get these benefits. And I stole that right off the Intel third generation product brief. This processor family also supports PCI 4.0 for twice the throughput compared to PCI 3.0, not to mention up to 64 PCI 4.0 lanes. In a two processor configuration like we have here, there's up to 128 PCI lanes. It's the PCI 4.0 aspect that provides the improved throughput for I.O. and storage for better overall performance. More lanes and twice the bandwidth. <laughs> Definitely a winning combination without the Tiger Blood or Crazy Town visit. To either side of the dual CPUs, there are 32 memory module slots that can be outfitted with your standard, registered, or load-reduced DIMMs, which will provide up to four terabytes at maximum capacity using 128 gigabyte memory modules in all slots. If you plan on using 3DS RDIMMs or LRDIM memory modules, you can double that capacity for up to 8 terabytes of memory using 256 gigabyte memory modules in all slots. Memory speeds of up to 3200 megahertz are supported, but 2933 megahertz and 2666 megahertz module speeds are also supported. The drives connect to a hybrid backplane capable of supporting SAS, SATA, and Gen 4 NVMe drive options in all bays. Although you will need a SAS controller if using the SAS option. Intel Virtual RAID on CPU, or VROC, is an enterprise RAID solution for SSD NVMe drives. It offers RAIDs of 0, 1, 5, and 10 using the integrated volume management device, VMD, inside the CPU PCI root complex. This allows for a direct connection to the CPU for super fast storage potential. It's also a low cost alternative to a standard hardware host bus adapter, plus offers better power consumption and performance with that direct connection to the CPU. There may not be any M.2 slots on the system board, but there are two slots for SATA DOM or disk on module that can be used to support the OS and mirror mode. Options include 64 gigabytes and 128 gigabytes. As mentioned, there are two PCI risers, each supporting a by 16 riser slot that can be used to support a number of options for RAID cards, host bus adapters, and high performance IO. For IO, you can choose from 10 gigabit, 25 gigabit, 40 gigabit, 100 gigabit, and 200 gigabit ethernet options. And then there's the optional OCP cards, which can provide even more I.O. options that won't take away from any of those PCI slots. Although that PCI Gen 3 mezzanine card slot supporting the OCP2 card will require removal of riser 2 and securing it with a few screws. The OCP3 card, as I said earlier, is much easier to deal with and you don't even have to remove the cover to replace or upgrade that one. It just slides in once you unscrew what they said in the service manual were thumb screws, but it came with regular screws. I'm okay with that. Unfortunately, we didn't have a lot to show and tell for this one. That said, it does have some impressive features and at only one U and with third generation Intel Xeon scalable processors can be a more than worthy addition to your network. As I mentioned, there are several chassis in the R182 family, each of which has a separate SKU, but that's just the way Gigabyte does it. Hit that subscribe button <laughs> if you liked our review because it does help our channel grow. If you have any questions, post them in the comments section below. We do provide answers, if possible. Until next time, I'm Doug Stuman with IT Creations, and thanks for watching.